This video tutorial provides a basic introduction into LASX image analysis. These days, researchers want to use images for more than simple observation or documentation. They want to use them for quantification, whether it's for counting the number of nuclei in a field or measuring the number of puncta per nucleus. The number of applications people want to perform are numerous. Leica offers 2D and 3D image analysis modules that can enable researchers to make measurements using a threshold-based binary mask approach on monochrome or color images, which is appropriate for quantification tasks like counting, area measurements, and determining intensity. Let's get into it. To open the 2D image analysis module, select the Analysis tab to the right of Quantify. To open the 3D image analysis module, open the 3D viewer and select the Analysis button at the far right. The workflow between the two modules is similar, so for the sake of this tutorial, I will work in the 3D analysis module. The big difference between the two being that the 3D module can measure the volume of a 3D Z-stack, whereas 2D works only for analyzing 2D images. The 3D viewer can measure both 2D slices and 3D volumes. Looking at the software, most of the workflow is displayed on the left-hand side in three main sections. At the top, you can create an image analysis configuration file that you can save and recall at a later date. This is helpful so you aren't having to reinvent the wheel each time you begin a new image analysis session. In the middle, you have your workflow steps, which I'll go through in more detail here with a real example. And at the bottom, you have the active dialog that is present based on what workflow step you are actively performing. In this example, you are on the Select Images to Measure tab, so this is the dialog that is open. If you were on the Adjust Threshold tab, this would be open. You also have some useful features at the top that aid in data visualization. On the far left, you can zoom in or out, which can be helpful when trying to do tasks such as adjusting your threshold to an optimal level or applying various image filters. On the far right, you have the ability to do a comparison viewer where you can visually compare the raw data on the left with your analysis image presented on the right. When looking at a thresholded image, you can show your threshold as filled, as shown here, or as outlined as shown here. Showing an outline can be particularly helpful in understanding what objects have been separated by the software. Now that you have a general understanding of the software layout, let's go through a real example. Let's say we want to measure the area, intensity, and get a count for the number of nuclei in this field, and we only want to count complete nuclei. In other words, we don't want to count the ones touching the borders. Lastly, this is a sample type we want to analyze frequently, so let's create a configuration that we can recall at a later date. Let's get into it. Start by pressing the Create New Configuration icon and giving your analysis routine a name. In this case, we'll call it Count Nuclei. That brings us to the main part of your workflow. Notice the software shows 10 steps. Out of those, there are a minimum of three of these steps that are mandatory, which include Select Images to Measure, Adjust Threshold, and Measurements to Present Your Data. To select images to measure, you first choose that option in your workflow. If you've already selected the image you want to measure, the only thing you need to do is press the Append button to load it into your workflow. If it was not currently active, then you'd go to the Projects tab, right-click on the image of interest, and select the Append to Image Analysis. Then when you go back to your workflow, you notice that it's in your list. If you want to batch process, you follow the same procedure and select as many images as you'd like to have included in your measurement. If you want to remove an image from your workflow, you press the Remove button, or to remove all images, press the Reset button. Even though we're looking at a three-channel image, for this example, I only count the nuclei channel. Note that if you did want to perform an analysis on more than one channel, I would first select the Multi-Channel option, which opens a channel mapping section at the bottom. Here, you press the Append button to add as many channels as you wish to include in your analysis. For this example, hypothetically if I was going to do this, I would add three channels. It is helpful to give them a name, so in this ca case I would call the cyan channel nuclei, call the yellow channel RNA, and call the magenta channel actin. You would then complete the remaining steps in the workflow the exact same way, noting that you would adjust your threshold and potentially other filtering based on each channel. For this example, again, I will measure only the nuclei channel. The next required step is to adjust your threshold. This step isolates the features you want to count and measure from the rest of the image. It creates a binary mask where the thresholded area is a 1 and the unthresholded area is a 0. Only the thresholded area gets measured. 
To adjust the threshold, you can do so by adjusting the slider on the intensity histogram. You can also select the accumulate button and manually select the area in your image that you want to be included in your threshold. The final mandatory step is to select the measurements button where it presents your data in the table below. But looking at your data, notice you have clusters of nuclei whose binary mask is overlapping and thus you have three objects being counted as one. Furthermore, you have objects touching the border that most people typically don't want included in their analysis. For example, if you wanted to know your average area or intensity of all the cells, you wouldn't want to include cells that are only halfway showing. This would throw off your measurement. We have features in the software to help improve this. For starters, you can use the image processing pre-filter to more accurately define your threshold and binary mask. For instance, you can apply the smooth white detail filter, as I will do in this case. This is an open filter, which is an erosion followed by dilation. I happen to know that this will be helpful for splitting these touching nuclei. If you want to know how any of these filters will affect your threshold, press the small information button to get an exact definition for any of these filters you are considering applying. You can apply more than one filter by pressing the plus icon. You can also select the auto contrast button. This applies a histogram stretch, allowing for better control of your threshold adjustment. Note that these adjustments won't alter the underlying intensity values being measured. Intensity data comes from the raw image and this is only used to generate a threshold specific to the features you're trying to analyze. The goal of any of these processing techniques isn't to make an image pretty or even realistic. It's to create a binary mask that fits the analysis objective of your experiment. For example, if you want to count nuclei and you don't care about the size or intensity, you only care about the count, then you can shrink the size of the mask down to make it easier to split the ones that aren't touching. The next optional step is to do a binary processing pre-filter. With this step, you're filtering the binary mask. There are a number of potentially useful filters, including things like filling holes, or the one that I will use, which is split touching. With this, it helps separate the overlapping nuclei. For each filter, you can adjust the strength and see the resulting change. Let's say that after doing everything you can to properly segment and separate objects, and there are still regions that are overlapping and being counted as a single object. You have the ability to manually separate or combine, depending on your objective, using the binary image editing option. Let's say I want to split two overlapping nuclei. To do so, you select the draw new shapes option and select the erase radio button. Now you choose the freehand tool and you can manually separate two overlapping cells. The next optional step is measurement frame. This can be used to manually define a specific frame size. One important feature located within this dialog is the ability to remove objects touching the border. To do this, for the frame type, select manually define, and for the mode, select that you only want to include things inside. Now, when you go to the final step, which is measurements, you can visually see that these features aren't being counted as they have a different color. That brings us to the measurements tab. The measurements tab is the first tab where your data is presented. It's also the tab that allows you to filter objects based on size, intensity, or any other measurable parameter. For instance, maybe you want to filter all objects smaller than a certain size, or objects less than a specific intensity. This is where you can do this. For the sake of this example, let's say I only want to count nuclei larger than this nucleus here. I can first click on this feature to determine its size, then I select Add New Filter Parameter, and can choose the area as an option that I want to filter. Now, for the lower size threshold, enter the area value of that cell size I want to remove. Notice now in the image that it only keeps objects larger than that specific size. You can see that once you get to the measurement tab, the data is automatically presented here at the bottom. There are four tabs in this section. Object Details provides the measurement data about each specific object. Note that if you select a specific object in the table, it will highlight that object in the image Conversely, if you click on that object in the image, it will show it in the table. Also note that at the top of this tab, it shows you the total number of objects that have been included in your account and the number that have been excluded based on filtering. The summary tab provides you statistical data for the objects that you've measured. Image measurements provides you a statistical summary for each image that was analyzed, if you were batch processing. The image summary displays statistical values based on the measurements included in your image measurements tab. 
One pointer for navigating this entire section is that you often don't need to display all the measurement parameters and you only need to focus on a few key parameters of interest. To do this, deselect measurement parameters, press the wrench icon, press the none option to remove all the measurements, then go in and handpick the few specific measurements of interest. In this case, I'm only interested in area and intensity, so I'll hide everything else. Notice this cleans up the table. The last tab I'm going to cover in this example is the report tab. Here you can set up the software to automatically export a report of your data to Excel. To do so, you choose the Excel option at the top. You can then specify the data you want to have exported based on the checkbox next to each section and only choose to export the stuff of interest. Then you press the export button to export your data. Note that when you run this entire sequence at the top, it will go through, analyze your data, and automatically export your report. Now that we've completed this workflow example, I'll end with a few general pointers. First of all, garbage in, garbage out. If you have low quality images to begin with, it can make your image analysis much more difficult as a downstream process. Lastly, image analysis is an iterative process. Try it first with a couple of representative images, then fine tune your analysis as needed based on analyzing more data. That concludes this video tutorial. For additional information, please reach out directly to your Leica Advanced Workflow Specialist. Thank you.